Um, well, hello everyone. We welcome you to Filmmaking Sucks the Podcast. Whoa, that's epic. The Podcast. Where we tell you about all the mistakes that you can make when producing a film and how to avoid them. And I'm your host, Manny. And I'm Lindsay. The other host. The other host. Yeah. Uh, and the hi, hostess. everybody. Oh. Yes. The hostess. The hostess. With the mostest. That's right. Mm. So we just had the Good Day premiere. We did. That was super fun. That was awesome to see. Yeah. So proud of Mr. Louis <laughs> Cortez of New Needle Productions. Mm. We had him on our networking episode, so you know who we're talking about. Yes. He yes. premiered his very first feature film mm -hmm. uh, called Good Day on uh, on Saturday night at the uh, Kew Gardens. Festival of Cinema. Festival of Cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, first ever film festival. First year for them. First year. Uh, looked his like they're having some great premiere. turnouts. Yeah. It, we, it he was had a, an awesome turnout. Yeah. Uh, sold, sold out, out crowd. theater. Sold out theater for that, so that was very cool for him. Congratulations to him. Uh, I was a DP on that. You were AD slash producer, associate producer. Associate I was producer. one of the associate producers. Yes, and his and his AD for most of the shoots. Mm -hmm. uh, I was DP for most of the shoots. There were a couple of days. There was two or three time, two or three shoots he had to do on his own. Mm -hmm. um, mostly pickup shots and the final. Uh, one of the last scenes in the movie between two of the actors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He did that himself. Oh, yeah. We were unfortunately producing Theta States at the same time. So. Yeah. So some things just didn't line up. Nope. But the movie is done and he will be doing festivals with that. Very cool. So uh, go out there to see that. Um, we had a nice little rap party after the mm -hmm. release. Release rap party. Yeah. I guess you would call it. Yeah. And I have to say, it's actually quite surprising. Um, talking to everybody who was there. See, I mean, a lot of these people we haven't, we a lot of the, a few of the actors we haven't seen since we finished wrapping that because, um, well, you know, we all do a million different things. We all have lives. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was surprising to hear from quite a few people there actually listen to the show. Yeah, I know. I was surprised. <laughs> thought we were out here just talking to you each know. other that's yeah it. pretty much so but there are a few people and josh who, that's it yes <laughs> yeah sounds like we may actually be talking to some people out there that's pretty cool yeah. now we have to be like super profesh from yeah now. yeah we got to be profesh <laughs> uh, i don't know if we can do that we'll just be pro professionals pro professionals sure <laughs> um so Going through, uh, uh, watching Good Day and uh, doing our own shorts recently. Oh, which reminds me. Let yes. me say it now. Um, Friday. Oh, yeah. Friday, August 25th. Um, that's two weeks from now or when this goes up, a week and a half. Yeah. Um, we are screening at two different festivals. Wow. Sort of festivals. Well, one of them is a festival. The other one is an... An event. An event. Yeah. A celebration. Yeah. The first one, uh, Knock Knock, our short Knock Knock, has its uh, Philadelphia premiere mm. at the Liberty Massacre, fourth year of Liberty Massacre. We love them over there. Mm-hmm. It's in Philadelphia. I, uh, that one... Uh, most of the weekend is at the Troc. I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's a different venue for the Friday night, which is when we're oh, screening. interesting. Yeah, it's a different venue for Friday night because it's only a four-hour night. I think it's 8 to 12. Gotcha. Um, so uh, you can find that on our page or look up Liberty Massacre on Facebook or, um, or AverageSuperstarFilms.com, hmm. and you can find the information for that. So if you're in the Philly area... You can check us out there. If we, we Philly listeners, that'd be exciting. Yeah, right. Uh, so you can check out our film "Knock Knock" with uh, Katie Schwartz and uh, Heather Drew mm -hmm. in that. Uh, that'll be playing Friday night. At, I, again, it's upsetting me that I can't think of the name of the the, <laughs> the, the venue for that. But uh, yeah, check that out. Lauren Lepper puts up a really good show over there, and it's a it's the first it's the fourth year that they've done Liberty Massacre. This is the first time that it's a whole weekend. It's a three day show. This yeah, time. Usually, usually it's, it's a one night. night event. Yeah, usually it's one night. So he's got three days of 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 horror films. 
That's so, so cool. Yeah, so that's that's really cool. So if you want to check that out, head on, uh, head now, on over to Average. Unfortunately, we won't be there because we'll be. Yeah, so head on <laughs> over to Average Superstar, Average Superstar Films.com, I believe it is, or maybe just Average Superstar.com and look that up or just Facebook uh, Liberty Massacre and find that information. Uh, we unfortunately will not be there because we have another screening here. It's local to us. So, you know, as much as I love Liberty Massacre, you know, uh, <laughs> this one's a little bit closer. Yeah. Uh, also, Friday, August 25th. Same night. That's crazy. Same night. I know. It's crazy. Uh, at Lovecraft Bar in Manhattan. Mm. Is it is HP Lovecraft's 127th birthday? Who's counting anymore? Well, they are apparently. Apparently, they're counting. <laughs> you know, uh, the Lovecraft Bar. It is a bar uh, themed to HP Lovecraft, and we've been meaning to get down there. Yes, and I wanted really to check it out for a while. Excuse. Yes, so it's really cool to see to do that. Uh, to be maybe there. when when the Beetlejuice Bar Beetle Bar has a uh, film festival, we'll make it down to that one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the Tim Burton Bar. Uh, so in Manhattan, uh, August Friday, August twenty fifth, Lovecraft Bar. This starts, I believe, six o'clock. Uh, it's five bucks to get in for this. That's so, it. Yes, That's really cheap. Deal. There's going to be live music. There's going to be horror story readings. That's cool. And films playing from, I believe, six to twelve. They are playing um, technically the first three episodes of Dark Tales from, from Channel, Channel X. X. Yes, they're playing, but it's it's not the it's not going to be the, the web episodic version. web web version. It's just the films of of Sleepless, The Au Pair, and Knock Knock. And we'll be there for that. Uh, Justin Morales has a movie playing there as well. Oh, that's I forget cool. which one it is, but he will be, his movie's playing there too. Uh, I don't know in any of the other, I think there's four or five other films playing. I don't know what the others are. But. So we're going to be meeting some new people, doing a little network network? Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's from 6 till 12 or 1 a.m. or something like that. $5 entry at a nice little An awesome, awesome bar. venue. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, if you're out and about uh, in the Manhattan area, we will will be there Friday night, August 25th, screening our films and celebrating H.P. Lovecraft's 127th birthday. So that's Happy it. Happy birthday, H.P. <laughs> the father of Oh my Cosmic God, it's horror. like H.P., H.P., H.P.? Yeah. What? Hashtag H.P., H.B., H.P. H.B., H.P., <laughs> wow. You're so clever. <laughs> that's why you have me on this show. Come I guess on. so. That's what I bring to, I that's what so. I bring to the table. So after watching Good Day and now going through some of our old, some of our shorts and some of the things we've done. Uh, uh, Walking down the memory lane. Yeah. Uh, we started thinking of a few things because uh, I've also gotten, I've also been talking to um, to one of our other friends, uh, Tom Ryan, who's producing his series of short films. And... Um, we all pass around ideas of how to do this and how to do that. Ways of saving money and still getting what you need. Yeah, what you getting want. what you need out of your out of your shot by making it uh, not as cheap as possible, but budget friendly. Yes, there you go. Budget friendly is a way of putting it. <laughs> so we decided we're going to talk about uh, a few of the things we do. Now we make horror films, mm -hmm. so a lot of these ideas are geared, I guess, towards effects in horror films. Yeah. You know, but um, if you can find other uses for them, then awesome. Tell us about them. Yeah. Um, um, so we're going to call this what? Filmmaking hacks? Yeah, filmmaking hacks, I guess, is what, we're, is what we're discussing. A couple of the little things we've done over the years to make some interesting looking effects happen. Okay. Um... We'll start off with probably the most expensive of them. Yes. And this is something that a lot of people wonder how to do, mm -hmm. how they can do it, how they can make it look good. Right. Um, but don't really have the resources to do it. And a lot of the time I see a lot, uh, you see a lot of indie films um, do it in post, mm -hmm. which is fine if you actually are good at CG. Right. Uh, but... Uh, when it comes to horror films, most of us horror filmmakers are very anti-CG. Yes. It's very, if it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. And only if it's absolutely necessary. That's very practical, it's better. Yes. Uh, gunshots. Yes, gunshots. Gunshots. 
how to do gunshots. Now, I can't help you with the barrel, with the muzzle shots, mm. with, the, with the flash of the muzzle. Well, um, uh, that, there are some hacks that we've done in the past. Uh, I've when, we, we, we avoid using guns for the most part. Yeah. I don't like using guns in movies um, because I don't make action films. No, and there's not a lot of terror behind a gun. I mean, there's yeah. terror behind a gun, but it's not the type, kind of terror that you want. Yeah, generally, I feel like only cops... Yeah. And um, anti heroes mm -hmm. should have guns. Yep. I think a villain with a gun, that's a gangster movie. Yeah. That's an action movie. That's not a horror movie. When no. the horror movie has a when when the horror movie villain has a gun, I feel it kind of cheapens things. It doesn't make him as scary because anybody could have a gun. It makes him yeah. very human. Yeah. And I think for a horror movie, unless it's a, and even so, even if it's a serial killer or a murderer even with a gun. serial killers don't use a lot of guns. Those yeah. are, I mean, you're not a They're serial not, killer you're not, if you're using a gun. You're like a mass murderer. There's very little intimacy in yeah. it. You know, very little intimacy in, in having a gun held up against, held to your victim. You know, then when it comes to horror movies with, with guns, you get something like The Purge, yep. which is also very action-based, mm -hmm. you know? Or you're going real far and you really end up in rape scenes, things like that. Very brutal, yeah. you know? Um, and you get it. Yeah, that That's really where a lot of the guns come in with, with horror films. And we try to stay away from a lot of those things. That was, it was a big 80s thing, yeah. too, to have guns, to have shotguns. But, the, you know, but shotguns are not very precise either. So mm. it's kind of, you know. Uh, but again, you're talking about your anti-hero that would generally have that. The killers themselves wouldn't. Mm. Uh, zombie movies. Yeah. are generally the only real horror film that you're you're going to have guns. Yeah. You're going to have guns in zombie films. Yeah, because, I mean, it's headshots. I mean, how many, how many times mm -hmm. can you really beat somebody over the head? I mean, gun is the most efficient way to kill a exactly. zombie. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but, unfortunately, it becomes expensive. Yes. It's very expensive and difficult to do lots of gunshots. Now, the way that we do guns is we don't actually get actual guns. No. We get we use airsoft pistols, right. which are a lot cheaper, mm -hmm. and they look just as good. And they're a lot safer. Yes. They're, they're much safer because they're, they're, they're literally air rifles. Mm -hmm. um, we never actually load them. No. I don't, I don't even load the air into them. No. You know? Um, they're just... Props. That's yeah. all that they are. And uh, when you pull the trigger, you still get the click out of it. Mm -hmm. So you still have your audible And you still have your actor cue. able to interact with it. Yes. Which really is the important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing to do, one thing to do with your, with your guns now, remember guns are heavy. Mm -hmm. Airsoft pistols are not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so when you have something like the airsoft shotguns, uh, I think it's about $60. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they look great. Yeah. They look great. Um, one thing you can do, because again, guns are much heavier than you're going to get out of this airsoft pistol. Now, the shotgun does have some good weight to it, mm -hmm. but it's not still not as heavy as a real shotgun. So what you can do is um, you can weight the gun by putting, you can put tape around the butt of the gun. Right. And, um, uh, 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 by putting tape, you put tape around the, around the butt of the gun a lot. It also makes the gun look a little bit older, mm -hmm. gives it kind of an evil dead kind of look to it, especially right. if you're doing horror, it works a lot. So you can put like uh, a duct tape or masking tape or something around the butt of the gun to make it look a little bit gritty. Mm -hmm. Uh, we scratch up the barrels of our guns. So they looked, they yeah, you look, can yeah, you use some, Brillo, Brillo yeah, pad. just get a Brillo pad and, and just run it along it a couple of times just yeah. to give it a little bit of an aged look to make mm -hmm. it look a little bit more. Look at look like the, it's been used. It's not something straight off the rack, right? Um, and that gives your shot. Uh, that gives the shots of the gun a little bit more texture. It makes yeah. it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, but if you put put tape around the barrel of the gun, you can actually put something under it. Yeah, like um, like a your lug actors, nut, like a, one of those um, those flat washers, the flat washers, those large heavy washers. Mm -hmm. 
um, that you get at Home Depot, you'll get them for like 20 or 30 cents each. Yeah, you get a you big know? bag for like two bucks. Yeah, exactly. You get a bag of them for two for $2 and you're going to add two or three pounds to the weight of this gun. And remember, it's on the butt. So most of the time your actor's hand or arm is going to be carrying it anyway. Yep. So you're not so you it's very easy to hide uh, that those things are attached to the gun and that gives it some weight and when once it has weight your actor actually feel actually holds it like it's got weight I've seen a lot of people do use uh, use guns in movies and you can tell that it's a lot lighter because they're just kind of swinging this thing around right and um, something like that especially when it comes to guns there's no kickback when you're using these there's no kick no. to the gun no. you know so the fact that there's no kick and there's no weight to it, your actor will sometimes hold it by one hand, even though you naturally wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing to this. They've, they're literally holding what's a to you know, what feels like a toy, so they end up treating it like a toy. Yeah. So you want to give them something to really work with. Yeah, and don't let you your know? actors be Rambo. If, you, if you're holding like a, a fake AK, then, you know, like, you got to remind them, you know, walk them through how to actually hold it and how you yes. want them to hold it. Yeah. You got to work, you got to work it through them, but I don't think that you're doing anything like that. Uh, yeah. Again, that's a, that's a little, that's a little Probably excessive it's just a side effect. Yes. I mean, that's so. a little excessive. Side note. Uh, what I've done, uh, for muzzle flashes, you can do this in post very easily and it doesn't have to be CG. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I've created a starburst. What I did for, for blood slaughter, we had the one shot, uh, where he was holding the gun and the gun was close to the camera and uh, he pulled the trigger and you know you're only you you're only going to need two or three frames of this okay so I went into Photoshop and I created a yellow starburst yep okay just a single frame starburst uh, one image and I overlaid it matched it up to the barrel of the gun and I used and I made it a three frame um a three frame, th I, I extended the image to three frames. Now you're going to want to take your, when you make your image in, in Photoshop, uh, you want to save it as a PNG file with a clear background. So that this way, uh, because the GIF itself, if you make it a GIF, you can keep the clear background. If you make it a JPEG, it's not going to have a clear background. Right. So I save it as a PNG file. Mm -hmm. And in the new Photoshop, you're going to export as PNG. And this will allow you to keep a transparent background and you'll have just the starburst put onto your screen. Okay. Uh, another thing to use in, in, in Photoshop, if you go into the presets, there is a preset for v HD video. So this way, your starburst is big enough to sit on your screen without looking pixelated so you don't have to resize it. Oh, that's okay? cool. You'd rather size it down than size it up. Right. So make it a little bit larger. All right. Then what you're going to do is you're going to overlay it in your video in your video layer and you're going to place it over the exact uh, 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 muzzle of your gun, right over the hole where the bullet should come out. You can extend that single image to three frames. Then you're going to use a fade in and a fade out, one f one frame each, okay? And you're going to get three frames of blast, of gunshot, all right? Now, it's going to look very um, rudimentary. It's You're going to obviously see just this image flash on the screen, okay? You're going to have, what you're going to do with that then is you're going to go into your video filters. You're going to add blur, a motion blur or a Gaussian blur, um, you're going to add a little bit of a glow to it. You're going to mess around with the glow, glow settings and the blur settings and all of that until it matches the natural uh, motion blur of your scene. Okay? Till it looks natural for that one. It looks like it's in there. Okay? You just mess around with it. Mess around with your contrast. Mess around with, your, with, with, with the brightness. Just... You know, it'll take you five minutes to just drop a bunch of filters on it and mess around with it. Then you're going to put it in there and it'll look good. But you're still missing the fact that a gun flashes too. Right. Okay. Now you'll take a single frame of pure white and put it directly over the second frame so now you have three frames of the gunshot. Of the, of like the you're going to take a single starburst. white, yes, yeah. the single, you're going to take the second frame of that. You're going to put a white, make another video layer, add another white frame, one single white frame over the second frame of the gunshot. Okay. All right. Then you're going to mess with the opacity. 
Mm-hmm. And you're going to uh, now in Sony Vegas, the way I do it, um, I can actually change the layer properties and I can make it an overlay or a subtraction or an addition or and all that's going to and what that's going to do is it's going to uh, it's going to change how the layer itself interacts with the layers beneath it. OK, so you're probably going to use either um, either screen or um, what was the other one I just said? Um, just fell out of my head. <laughs> 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 Thanks a lot. You're no, you're no help in this. <laughs> you're like way above me. I'm yeah. just like nodding and smiling. You're probably gonna use you're probably gonna use the screen layer of the screen uh, type layer, and um, what you want is for that white frame. It's gonna add brightness to certain parts of the shot, so the brightest areas of your shot like where the light is hitting your character and hitting is going to get a little bit brighter okay and the darker areas it's probably it's more than likely not going to depending again depending on the layer setting you use it's not going to affect them much right and it shouldn't and it really shouldn't okay. no you want to see a flash you want it to look like a flash now it's still going to look like a solid white Okay, so again, that's where you mess with your opacity so you can see through it. But it's only a single frame flash. Mm -hmm. And that's all you're trying to get the effect of is a single flash frame. Right. Okay, if you do more than that, it becomes noticeable. Make it one. In your preview, you may not even notice the single flash. But once it's rendered out, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so render it. Uh, render the five seconds of video. Do it a couple of times and And play play with your settings. Take it. Take half an hour, forty-five minutes of your time to get this shot right. Now, this is just for the gun itself. The flash. That's it. Just the gun itself. Just that shot. The other side now is well. How do we shoot a character now? Mm. Well, there is another thing that you can do too that we've done in the past, where we've actually taken a cigarette, and I guess now with these fancy yes. cigarettes, you can actually blow smoke up the muzzle and then have it come back out. Yeah. Now you got to do this in separate shots. Mm-hmm. This has to be separate shots. So when you come back, there's a little bit of smoke coming out of the it looks out really of the cool. nozzle, and it yeah. does look really good. We have that. We've done it with cigarettes. Yes. Yeah. We did it with a cigarette in the in the in the shotgun blast. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, now what I did was this was what what the the effect I'm talking about was for a handgun. Mm-hmm. Okay, for a shotgun, you're going to need a much more effective starburst. Now, again, or not, not again, but what I what I neglected to mention earlier is that your starburst cannot be all sided; it has to be left or right sided, depending on what the uh, which direction the, the the gun is pointed in. If it's all sided, then it's going to look ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, so you got to have a one-sided starburst. Going away from the gun. Going away from the gun, obviously. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure you're yes. clear. Yes, So that's how you do, that's a quick, simple, cheap way. If you have video editing software, you can do this. Anybody can do this. You don't even have to use it in Photoshop. You can do it in, in paint. You're just creating a starburst shot. Okay, and if you're really unclear as to what a starburst is, just do a Google you can find probably find a pre-made starburst yeah. on Google. Yeah, just do, just a, do Google a Google image, image search, search and find it, it, and and just pop it on there and mess with your settings that way. Yep. And you have a starburst for free with no with no effort whatsoever. Right. right. You know, uh, if you really, really, really want to go go really cheap, you can probably find overlays of these gunshots on YouTube already. There's plenty of guys out there, plenty of people out there that that, that all make these things and put them on their YouTube channel for you to use. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then all you got to do is credit them at the end of their in the credits of your film, and you know, do you're the right good. thing. Yeah. So then the second half of this is how do you shoot the how actor? How do you actually shoot the actor? Traditionally, squibs. Right. Now, when it comes to squibs, you uh, what a squib is is literally gunpowder. Mm. It's literally a gunpowder um, pouch. Pouch, you know, which is lit by an electronic fuse. Mm. Okay. Uh, now, when you see movies and they're doing demolitions in movies, and you see the actor and they put the, they pop that little thing on, they they hit, they take the, uh, they take the electrical circuit, they hit the little metal thing, and boom, something explodes in the far distance. Yeah. That's almost exactly how squibs work. Right. Okay. Um, 
we don't recommend using squibs no. at all without a trained professional. No. And if you want to get a trained professional for that, you have to license them. They have to have a pyrotechnic license. You have to pay them. License. They need a pyrotechnics license. Need they need permits. a fire marshal license. Fire exactly. Marshal. You probably need uh, paramedics and police on site. Mm -hmm. And on top of all that, before you can even do any of that, you need a permit. Yeah. Which and means in order you need to get insurance. a permit, you need insurance. Yes. So that becomes very expensive yes. very quickly. And very dangerous. It can and be dangerous. It can be extremely dangerous. Now, I know that you can you can do a Google search and somebody will tell you that you can tape a firecracker to your actor. Uh, and with a little, with a little piece do not, of board, don't ever do, do not that. Do, do not do that. Do don't not. That's ever, not an ever, option. Ever that is not. No. No, 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 Someone no. is going to get hurt. Yes. Someone's going to get hurt. I don't care how many of your friends that you know that made movies said, oh, I've done it before and it's just fine. All it takes is one to go wrong yep. and you have an actor in the hospital now. Yep. You and know? that's very expensive. Yes, <laughs> yes. you, yeah, and because the chances are you're doing this without you're permits and without insurance. Yep. You know, especially if this is one of your first films, there's no insurance, there's no money, there's no, there's no nothing. So yes, you will be sued and you will be brought up on charges. You will yes. be arrested. Yes. For criminal and negligent uh, endangerment of yes. another person, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. You know. We're not lawyers. We're different filmmakers yes. here. Mm-hmm. So do not mess with fireworks. No. Just don't do it. And while we're on the subject, also, do not run around the street with a airsoft pistol and mm. expect that to be okay either. Yes. This is for when you have a close set that you are in complete mm -hmm. control of and that your, your location manager is completely aware that you are going to have prop guns. Yes. We have done this in the past and I would not recommend it. No. And no, all we actually we absolutely have done this yes. in the past. We have done scenes in the streets with guns. Fortunately, in our neighborhood, just about everybody on our street knows, knows we, we make films. films. Yep. So when they see us on the street with a camera and some guns, nobody worries about anything. No. They know we're making a movie, and a lot of the time, the people on our neighborhood they they watch out they watch out of their windows, yep. which unfortunately ruins some of our shots, but. It keeps the cops from being called on us because they know full well what's going on. And in the off chance that a, that a patrol car happens to pass us, we have 50 witnesses who know who we are, can yes. vouch for us that we're not doing anything dangerous. Yeah. And, and most yeah, likely we'll be, we, we, we are we, still going to be we're still gonna ticketed be shut and down. fined and shut we're down. We're still going to be shut down at the very least for the evening. You right. Know? And this is, this is when our, our country was in a much calmer mindset so mm. i would definitely not recommend doing that now again yes close set when you were in control with your location manager yes. Try, completely please. aware that you were going to be having guns on set yes do not use the weapons outside unless you have literally shut down the street and you have your permits and police around so which again you probably can't afford anyway nothing wrong with that just don't even write it into your script no nope. uh we had scenes where we had uh actors portraying cops mm -hmm. and um well those cops have to have guns yeah okay so we get the gun um holster for them mm -hmm. and you have one of two options you can get a bunch of toy guns yeah. and paint the butts black yep. keep the nozzles orange yellow whatever crazy yes. color it is keep it because you're if it's sitting in the holster you can't see it anyway no. so just paint that paint the handle black so that when the actor is wearing it it looks on good it, so it looks pretty yeah, good you it know. looks good just sitting in a holster yep. okay you can do that or you can even go online, a little bit of money, you can buy prop gun holsters, right. which have the butt in it already. There's no actual gun. It's one solid piece or even just the butt of the gun to sit in the holster. Yep. And it looks good because yep. your actors aren't using it. Yep. For the ones that are using it, you're going to want to do this in very closed Yes. Closed uh, circuit, closed areas that you have total control over, yes. and you're allowed to do it where nobody's going to see you and nobody's going to. Now, uh, again, I'm not advocating anybody to break any laws. Please pay attention because, like in New York City, even even toy guns that look real are illegal. Yes. Okay, so please check the laws of your local neighborhood yes. and see what it is. Now, I know Middle America, a lot of places, guns are a natural thing. The but remember, 
Don't ever bring a real gun on set to save yourself money. Don't if your it. uncle Tom has a gun, don't don't touch don't it. Use don't it. use it. Don't use don't it. Don't even consider it, please. Like, yes. You, all you need is one person yeah. to say, hey, this is cool, and... Yeah. Tragedy strikes, and and we can tell you as soon as you bring the prop guns out, it's it's everybody thinks they're GI Joe. Yes. everybody wants to pose with the guns mm-hmm. and play with the guns. Do not let this happen. Please control your set. Please control your guns. Have mm-hmm. a prop master on that day who is in control of the guns. Remember, there is a thing called Facebook now. Yes, and once your actors and everybody starts, especially when you especially when you're doing a zombie zombie mm-hmm. shoot, you got a lot of extras and everybody's playing with the toys and playing with the guns. They're all taking pictures of this. Um. We've we had this happen. We friends. have actually had people on sets that we've worked on, where they do they start posing with the guns, and we're shoot we're we're we're, we're shooting, the whole scenes are indoors, and we're totally allowed to do it. The people know that they're doing it, yeah. and everything. So it's all, you know, private mm-hmm. area where nobody in the streets can see it, but. We've had people take pictures and sometimes have, we've even had kids playing zombies on our sets yep. and people have played with the guns and they see the kids in the pictures mm-hmm. and we've actually had these pictures reported to yep. Facebook. Yeah, people, people, people do get have upset. lost friends and family yes. over these pictures. Mm-hmm. Everybody thinks it's funny until somebody gets upset and then next yes. thing you know, your entire Facebook profile is a nightmare. Mm-hmm. People do get upset when they see you on set with children and guns in yep. close proximity. Yep. They do get they do get very upset when they see it. So just avoid it. Yep. Okay. Keep take control of your set. Okay. Um, Legal disla- disclaimer over. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, so now, how do you shoot a person in a shot? Let's let's just for argument's sake say we're doing a zombie film. Right. Okay. Well, there's there's multiple options of the, how to do the this. The easiest, the the most, the one that ever, most people know is the headshot. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the the, the uh, uh, I want you to get into how we do the other shots, but right. the gunshot, the headshot is very easy. The Savini method of headshots. How do you do the Savini method? Well, isn't it just. You uh, you can actually attach something like a prosthetic, and well, then break a little... the process down before the prosthetic. What do you do to the head? Well, you They're put a zombie. You, yeah, well, you put a little. You mean obviously you do the zombie makeup, and then you mm-hmm. put a little bit of blood, and then what you're gonna do is a thin layer of latex over that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, between the latex and the blood, though, um, what you're gonna want to do is run a little fishing line, um, and you can actually put the latex will actually attach to the fishing line. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to, when you're ready to do the gunshot, you pull the fishing line and it'll pop off the little piece of latex and there's the bullet hole right there. Yeah. Um, so that's one method. Um, if you, there's, a, there's a way of even getting a little bit wet enough where once you pull it off, you get a little trickle of blood to come down. Yeah. You know, it takes a little bit of it, practice it to get that. And, it takes and, a little bit of practice to get that right. Yeah. But uh, uh, Savini used to just use a piece of a condom. Yeah. He used a little piece of condom and yank it off and it would bleed underneath yeah. it. Now, again, he has plenty of practice doing it, so he knows how to do it it's, exactly. It's pretty tricky. I have yet to really yes. actually do a really good master of yeah. it. Uh, but the again, other... you, can, you can search on YouTube for a, mm-hmm. for a, uh, a, a tutorial of how to do it. It's not, it's very, very cheap. Mm-hmm. And it's a simple effect that is been used for years. I, Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead, Day of the Dead, all the big zombie movies from the 90s and before used this method. Yeah. Because, I mean, and these are all options. I mean, if you have a live person, it makes more sense for them to bleed. Zombies, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, technically, if it's a really it old zombie, cool it, it's going to look cool if they bleed. But technically, mm-hmm. a zombie that's been dead, like a really decomposed zombie is not going to have... Yeah. Enough liquid blood run, running through their yeah, veins. So you don't have to worry about making them actually bleed. You know, so just make you, a black hole looking thing and you're pretty much good. Yeah. They, I mean, there's there's interesting editing ways where, uh, you know, you shoot, you get a shot of the, the person without a prosthetic, without anything on their forehead. Mm-hmm. Then you can do a real quick little bullet hole, have them move their head down. It's like mm-hmm. their head is blown back and then it comes back down and there's the hole right there. Mm-hmm. Um so those are like the easiest. So those are the headshots. Those are the That's headshots. The headshots. Yeah. Um, but see, so you want to blow wanna somebody's brains out. You want right? to have fun. <laughs> no, forget forget even blowing somebody's brains out. You want to have fun, like right. what we did to Ralph. Okay. Okay. How do you do that? Now, what we did to Ralph. Let me set up the scene now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is uh for the we did this for the TV show for Zombie Hunter City of the Dead, mm-hmm. and these are guy that this is story of a zombie outbreak in New York. Right. So these guys are 
fully arming themselves. This is a group of normal, everyday guys who realize that this is happening and they're survivalists of mm-hmm. sorts. So they decide we're going to arm ourselves and we're going to defend ourselves and we're going to fight these zombies off ourselves. And that's what the show is. That's basically what the that's what the whole show is about. Right. It is your it is your average zombie thing. And I'm sure most people watch Walking Dead and what happens? They have to find a way to get guns and they did that. So these guys got guns um, through a local drug dealer, I believe it was. Uh, this was almost 10 years ago at this point. Yeah. <laughs> they got it through a local drug dealer. So now they are armed to the teeth and they have automatic weapons and <laughs> shotguns and handguns and everything. Uh, so the shot, the thing we did was um, we had one of the actors who had an automatic, uh, 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 like a Tech 9 or something like yeah. that. And he blasted away one of the one of the zombies, and the zombie got eight or nine bullet bullet eight or nine shots we, to him. I, I think we did five or six. Okay, fine, five or six. Well, I actually did it twice, okay. so it looked like more. Yeah, we did it twice. Yeah, to get more. So we cut away to him shooting, and we cut back for more shots. Right. And basically, what happened was uh, Ralph is a big dude. Really big. Ralph's a really big guy, <laughs> yeah. okay? Uh, you know, 300 some odd pounds big. So he had plenty of chest and stomach space yeah. to set up this apparatus that I'm gonna, that you're going to explain to them. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah, you're going to explain it. Awesome. And in the shot, we got off, like I said, in total in the edit, it came out to about eight or nine exploding bullet wounds in... You know, so it was five or six at a time, five to each take. Right. So without having to cut away, he got six, ba 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 ba. His chest, boom, 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 explosions mm-hmm. of gunshots, and they looked great. Amazing. They looked amazing. Blood spray and oh, yes. it, was, it was awesome. Uh, the way we set Ralph up was he got the shots and he would fall backwards. He now, fell to his knees. No, he, fell, he back. fell backwards. He went, but he went timber like a tree backwards. Oh, you're right. He did. And okay. uh, we were shooting in a warehouse, and the warehouse had um, had these uh, uh, um, inflatable um, like bumpers. Yeah, they're they're basically like four foot wide air pillows, mm. because this is what they used in trucks for when they shipped some of their equipment. Right. And we put two or three of them on the floor behind him. Mm. So this way, when he fell backwards, he landed onto these. So he right. did a total, you know, yeah. <laughs> toppled over backwards, and he landed on these giant air pillows. No, no, no. Totally Real safely. Real quick dis- disclaimer: we mm. we do have people who are on Zombie Hunter City of the Dead do have a fight choreographer. Yes. Um, that will that does do the necessary uh, lesson. Yeah. On how to fall properly. There's tons yeah. of practice beforehand. There. I he mean, practiced falling. Yeah. It wasn't just hey, do this and yeah. fall. No, Not he, just like hey, throw yourself backwards. Because exactly. Again, legal disclaimer: don't do it. Yeah. We put the and since they were four different air pillows, they're going to move. Yeah. So we threw a tarp down on top of them, mm-hmm. which kept them. Yep. Together, so when he landed on it, held them all together. We tipped the, tip the tarp, I'm gonna put the tarp underneath it a little bit, and it basically created an air mattress. Mm-hmm. Okay, you could use an air mattress. You can go on Absolutely. Amazon and get a fifteen dollar air mattress. Mm-hmm. You know, a king size, uh, or no, actually, I think we got queen size air mattresses for fifteen or twenty bucks. Yep. You can put that on the ground and let your actor fall onto that. Yep. And perfect. It's. Yep. Obviously, twice the size of whoever your actor is, they could fall backwards, fall forward onto an air mattress, and they're totally safe. Right. Okay. Now, how did we actually shoot Ralph? Well, the number one thing that we needed was an air compressor. Um, Mm -hmm. You can get that at Home Depot or any really hardware store. Mm -hmm. Um, One or two horsepower uh, air compressor costs you between $60 and $80. Yeah. This is something that. You can you'll probably you can use again later. Now, if you have this air compressor again, uh, uh, something as you move on uh, to bigger and more expensive uh, shoots, if you have an airbrush artist, you can use this air compressor yes. for your airbrush as well. Now, so you can airbrush makeup mm-hmm. that way. Okay, and so it becomes useful. Yeah, I mean, you can use this as a potato gun thing to yes. shoot debris. You can use it for. Um I can't even remember all the different ways we use this air compressor. Yeah. yeah, you get a one or two horsepower air compressor, mm-hmm. and um, you're going to set up with tubes. Yes. He created the, he made the, we use these these tubes um, 
And what you're doing is you're basically, uh, you're going to fill the tubes with compressed air. Yes. And you're going to add a trigger to this. Now, this takes a little bit of finessing and knowing, kind of knowing what you're doing. Again, you can find, look on YouTube and find a tutorial how to do this. Okay. Yeah. Now, get your most handy of friends. Yeah. The guy who likes to build things and let him do this. The guy whose dad has has a has a full working wood, yes. wood shop in mm -hmm. his in his house. That's that's the guy you're going to want to talk yes. to. Yes. Your friend if you have a friend who's a mechanic, he knows how to do this yeah. kind of thing. Okay? Because these tubes have to be airtight and you have to know how to clamp them together properly. Yeah. You have to understand how the bladders on them are going to work, how the triggers are going to work. You have to understand how to trap the air in a certain area, use the trigger to blast it out into the the into the secondary tubes okay uh the trigger is basically going to be in the center between you're, you're going to go from the air compressor into some tubes yep. then you'll have the trigger yep. then more tubes yep the second set of tubes is where you fill with blood yes uh, that, yeah, that's where that's where you put the blood. So pretty much the air is in the first set of tubes and the blood is in the second set. When you pull the trigger, the air is going to rush forward into the blood and essentially propel it forward or mm -hmm. outward. Yeah. Um, for a number of different effects, what you're going to do is on the second set of tubing, you can cut little slices just with like a real little razor blade. Um, and that'll actually come out in different spots. That's how you get different like blood that mm -hmm. kind of drips out from different locations. Um, Ralph had a whole... He had, we, yeah. Ralph had a, uh, there, there was a board, it was yeah. a piece of wooden uh, board that was strapped give, to his give, chest. Yeah, we should give props to yeah. uh, Michael Scardillo of Scars Effects. Um, this is all his design and his in, mm -hmm. ingenuity and, and, and real genius work. Um, for the super safety of, of everyone, he does use um, like plastic boards. Um, yeah. I'm not really sure what they're from. Um, but he, he actually... Um, connects the tubes i don't know what that, i'm thinking of a word and i can't think of the word he makes he gets a flat board yeah like a piece of wooden board or a plastic board or something and he attaches he attaches straps to it so it's mm. wearable right for the actor okay yeah. then uh, ralph put this whole thing on under his shirt so the shirt is now covering the board yep. these tubes are attached to the board or strapped onto the board yeah. as well yeah. now again it worked well because ralph is a big guy yeah so we could put you know, a layer or two on him to, to now remember these tubes also, they're a little thick. Yeah. So you do, so you don't want your actor running around through the scene with no, it. No, you want these them are nice going and to steady. Be, these are, these are like your actor is in one location. You don't want to move too much. Um, you don't want to just, you know, you could easily dislodge the, um, yeah, they'll come loose. They yeah. can come loose very easily if yeah. you're moving around because you're just, you're talking about, I, they're pretty, I mean, they're, they're sort of delicate. They're not delicate. They're, they're heavy. Yeah. That they're too. heavy. That's really what it is. They're heavy. They're, they're uncomfortable. The, you, your actor will be um, limited in motion. Exactly. Because he's attached to a gigantic air compressor. Yes. Um, so now The air compressor is 15 feet away. Yeah. Okay, 15, 20 feet away, and you have all this tubing running across Of course him. you want this in a and wide shot. Why, you know, you want a nice wide shot of this. Yeah, and this is why we don't move the actor around much, yeah. because once he starts moving, the whole apparatus is going to move. Yeah, so essentially what happened was, you know, our character was turned, and they saw this one zombie in the corner, and he just takes a shot at him. That was yes. the setup for this. Yes, yeah, so you have um, minimal movement for the actor wearing yeah. this. What Mike does is um, he actually uses the front of the hose for a lot of his gunshots. Um, and what he does is he puts sponge material and latex at the, uh, at the end of the pipe, at the end of the tube, I'm sorry. Um, so it actually allows the blood and the air to build up a little pressure behind it as it fights to pop yeah, the now this all happened blocking out of the end. Now it's not actually fighting. This is this is happening within a matter of seconds. Sec <laughs> <not> <laughs> milliseconds. Seconds. Yes, this is happening <laughs> in a split second. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that little bit of in there creates even more pressure. Right. And it gives it a good blast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Ralph had on this thing was five or six different spots on this board that covered his chest and stomach area entirely. Mm -hmm. yep. Five or six different spots under him. So, and and Mike and stood there with five different triggers. Five triggers. It was pop, like pop, Mike pop, and pop, two of popping people. them off. Yeah, popping yeah. them off at all different times. So it looked like da, 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 and he got shot. Yeah, and what you want to want to do too? Um, you want to cut a hole in your clothing. 
mm-hmm. right, in, right in front of the pipes. You want to have something loose. Um, what he had was a button-up Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. You so you could which have, which covered the holes very well. It's <laughs> a very busy shirt. Yeah, yeah. You're not you're not going to see a hole in a very busy pattern. Mm-hmm. Um, so once the holes were actually cut, he lined them up with the with the tubing, and so then it didn't have anything blocking its way. It literally just shot up. Which is another reason why you don't want your actor to move much because once they move, the hole is going to move, yep. and now that thing's going to blast. It's going to burst, and it's going to burst inside the shirt, and you just wasted the shirt and yep. the shot. Yep. Now you got to reload the whole thing, do it again, and hopefully they don't move again. Right. Uh, he does use some. He does use double sided tape to hold the shirt in place sometimes. Mm-hmm. But again, that's another reason. Once your actors start moving, you're going to see that the shirt is taped to their chest. Yep. Okay. So it is a very specific thing to do, mm-hmm. and this is why we started with this because it takes the most explanation and it's yeah. probably <laughs> the most expensive of them. But the truth is, for a hundred dollars. You can have your entire yeah, and these, zombie army and these can boards, be shot. Yeah, and you can you can utilize these boards in any oh, yes. way. You reuse um, them. You know, he's actually put them on the back of the head for mm-hmm. a lot of girls who have long hair. He's hidden smaller boards underneath their hair, mm-hmm. and literally you can blow out somebody's brains at the back of their head that way. Yeah, and it looks great. Especially it looks when awesome. You stand when it hits in front the wall, wall if you have a wall at, that you oh, can yeah. hit with blood, forget it. It's yeah. it's it's a money shot. It's absolutely a money shot. Uh, he's actually filled it with. We filled some of the tubes, with some of the thicker tubes. When depending on how you're hiding in a thicker tube, something like a brain burst, fill it with ragu. Mm-hmm. Fill it with fill it with tomatoes, and then um, you end up with you yeah. end up with brain bits on the wall. Now you have this thick, chunky sauce yeah. on the wall as well. Yeah, I mean for super bright bright blood, um, Mike's found um, tomato based blood, which is like this super red. Yeah. Like and you hit a white wall with this, forget it. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And it oh, looks it's, great. It's, it looks amazing. Um, chunks of sponge could be used for brain matter. Mm-hmm. Um, he's done that. Um, he's he's done some nasty, nasty combinations. Yeah. Cottage cheese. Yep. Um, you know, the, just look up a blood recipe, and you'll you'll pretty much have some really great recipes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like some people are really protective of their blood recipe. I, I don't get it. I think we it. should really have Mike on. We really should let him let him explain some of the really creative and genius things he's done. I, I agree. You know, uh, he's so we'll do a special effects yes episode yes, we with really him because I think uh, he's he he's a genius. I mean, really in the, in the lab, he's just mm-hmm. he comes up with some very very yeah. Nice um, ways you know, doing. other ways to do this. Um, if you Google how to make a potato gun, mm-hmm. um, we've used potato. He's used potato guns. Um, he's actually done um, when gunshots. Were wild and um you know when it bounces off what we had in the scene was like uh wood crates Mm -hmm. and he actually filled up a potato gun with like i don't even remember what but it was it was he had he had some he had some sawdust and sawdust um, and powder and flour i think it was sawdust flour and again sponge because you anything shooting out of a potato gun is going to hurt if it hits someone you don't want to do that yeah no you clear the entire he found he found brown sponge (laughs) and cut it up and when he blasted out because it was for an explosion Mm -hmm. he blasted out the actors were hiding behind um behind these big wooden crates and he hit the crates with uh with the with the potato gun that was filled with flour and dust and chalk and sawdust yep. and the sponges. Yep. The sponges were dark were dark and light brown, mm-hmm. so it looked like wood yep. blasting into it. And then you let your post foley, mm-hmm. you let your post sound effects do the rest. Yep. Okay, because it's moving at such a speed you can't tell. Now, a good thing to do what, what he does too is he wets the sponge a little bit so it has some weight to it. Yeah. Because a dry sponge is not going to go anywhere. It's just mm. going to as soon as it hits the air it's going to it's going to it's going to fall down. So he wets the sponge a bit and blasts it that way. Yep. So this way it moves, mm-hmm. okay? And then if you add sound effects of wood hitting, yeah. Oh, yeah. your brain fills in the holes and it doesn't notice that it's sponge. Hell, you don't you barely see it to begin with. Yeah. But it's all in how you slice the sponge up too, mm-hmm. you know? You want shavings he got almost. Large, I mean, that's yeah, what you want to Yeah, he got go large painting sponges, those mm-hmm. big, you know, yeah. ones you get for like 4 or 5 bucks each, and he shaved them down into slices. So, yeah. you know, so they look like uh they look like um splintered wood. Yeah. And he wet them and blast them out and it looked amazing. Okay, mind blowing. Yeah, so um, 20 bucks. 20 bucks he did a he did a, a reaction shot of an explosion. Mm-hmm. 
and it looked great. Um, other ways, if you if you're not doing gunshots um, for for blood pumps, mm-hmm. um, I mean you can you can Google all of these. Um, there's the bug sprayer version. Yeah. You know, uh, you, if you just pump the handle, then you're not really doing the elect the you know needing the electricity to mm-hmm. actually get the air compression. You actually just build it up yourself. Yep. Just pump, 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 and pump. We have pump. used those before. When you have enough, you lock it down. Once again, you hit the trigger, and the pressure mm-hmm. just yeah. shoots it out. You put the blood. In the hose. Yep. Put, Put the blood, the blood in, the in the hose. Mm-hmm. So that this way, it's the first thing to come out. Yep. Okay? Um, what we developed, what Ralph developed for us a long time ago, uh, we had an idea of a bicycle pump. Yep. Uh, so we bought a bike pump, and Ralph cut the end off of the... He cut the nozzle off of the bike pump. Mm-hmm. And he bought a small, like, walnut-sized shower head. Yeah. And what he would do is fill the hose of the of the bike pump with the blood, mm-hmm. and then we put the shower head on it, and we use a clamp yep. on the end of that a a, a, a wire uh, clamp on the end to hold it on and keep it airtight. Mm-hmm. And then he just points the shower head at whatever it is and push, push the plunger down to the bike hose, and you get one single awesome spray of blood. Yep. We've used this in the blood slaughter trailers. Mm-hmm. We used it in the blood slaughter movie. Yep. Um, I think we even used it in Data States at one point. No, we used the, the sprayer. Did My we? preference is the sprayer. Mm. I like the sprayer. It's okay. Just, it's just a personal preference that yeah. you eventually get to. Yeah. Um, mastectomy used the sprayer. Um, yes. Another thing that you, you can do is you can buy... Oh, there's some sort of special plumbing tubing, which is like plastic. It looks almost like a balloon. Mm. Um, you can put that at the end... And you can actually slice that, um, and that'll this is collapsible actually collapsible tubing. It's collapsible it's tubing. Flat tubing. Yeah, um, we use that for mastectomy, and then usually, and then you just put slits all along it, so as the blood runs so it, through it, the tube. Now, the purpose of the flat tubing is that it sits under the yeah. effect. Yep. And it sits flat up against their skin, mm-hmm. so you don't have a round tube that just that you have to work around and try mm-hmm. and hide. Yeah. Um, this is nice and flat. Uh, it lays flat against the skin. It's not very thick, so there's not a lot of buildup that you have to do around the wound mm-hmm. or the prosthetic that you're hiding the tubing under. Um, then, like I said, you just do slits all along it. Um, and as the blood runs through, it starts to do a trickle down effect. And so for mastectomy, we had, um, a scar that she was ripping open. Essentially it was stitches that she was ripping open. And as, as each bit of it gave way, um, the blood kind of came out of each one of these slits. It made its way across the... It made its way the across tubing. the across the tubing, which is across the wound. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was bleeding from multiple points, which is really great mm-hmm. money shot. I mean, it's a really great effect. Yeah, um, so it's and not just one trickle from the side. The entire wound, the entire the six across. seven inches across of the wound, had blood pumping from it yep. from all sides in different speeds. Yep. Because the slits are different sizes, so some of them. So so you and can the blood put, hit some of them first, and uh, you know. Um, yeah, and then what it actually did um, with this particular effect was it actually pooled inside the prosthetic. Mm-hmm. And so when she actually removed the prosthetic, it actually she, unleashed in one gigantic, you know, yeah, there was uh, a bleed. Big, yes, yeah. yes. So it looked like, yeah, it was, it was kind of an eruption of blood. Yeah. And then seeing as the tube was still flowing through, the blood kept pouring. Mm-hmm. So it was, she was actually actively bleeding through the scene. You know, first you had the burst, and this could be all done in one single yep. take yep. with this effect. Yeah. And we just lit it properly where, you know, the tube went under her arm and her arm was under shadow, so you couldn't see it very well. Mm-hmm. You couldn't see it at all. Yeah. You know? Uh, so that's one, that's another way of doing... Um, another thing that we just use for Beneath is um, they're little, like, um, water squirters for kids. It literally yeah. looks like a gigantic crayon, and it has a handle that you pull out the end. Crayon. 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 So I don't know what a crayon is. Crayon. <laughs> leave my jersey accent alone. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I mean, we got two for like a dollar at the at the mm-hmm. local like. At, at the supermarket. Yeah, yeah, at the supermarket, the discount the pool, store, the, the penny, pool, yeah, whatever. The, the, the things the kids play with in pools. They just suck up the water and spray one single yeah. spray out of it. Yeah, we filled that with blood and we got an awesome. Yeah. Oh wow, that 
it looked great. Yeah, it looked great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, you, again, you can just Google. There's a lot of different options when it comes to blood pumps and blood sprayers. You keep um, saying you can just Google, but what do they need us for if they, I know, they're right? just going to keep True. Googling? Listen, I'm just going to tell you what to look for. Um, so, yeah, no, definitely those are four really great options for blood effects. Mm-hmm. Um, while we're on effects, you know, um, latex and paper towel. Uh, we did almost all of our effects for blood slaughter using latex and paper towel, uh, oatmeal. Um, I anything don't like that's, oatmeal. No, but we've, we've I don't done care it. for the oatmeal zombie look. I think it's old and dated, and it works best in black and white and really shoddy colors. Uh, I know there's a lot of effects artists that say, yes, it works. It works mm -hmm. just fine, but... Then, my, my preference is paper towel in my text as well. Yeah, yeah. The oatmeal zombie, eventually you have zombies that start melting on your set. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, super. you can get a bottle of latex from any Halloween store, party store around Halloween time. Uh, Amazon, blah, Go blah, blah. Go for the Ben Nye. Ben Nye, I trust it the most. It has the least amount of, um, oh God, what is that thing called? Ammonia. Ammonia in it. You really want to be careful about the kind of latex that you buy. Mm -hmm. Mask making uh, latex is not the same as the latex you put on people's skin. It can be used, but you don't want to. It's going to smell it's so very bad. Heavy and it's very it's, yeah, it's, You need to do it outside. It's, yeah. it's very... It's very strong smelling with the it's very strong ammonia and smell. It, and it can be and 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 it can always people with sensitive skin can can have an issue with mask mm -hmm. making latex. Yes. Um. So you definitely remember wanna... when it comes to latex, don't cheap out and buy mm. that. Just put the money in. Yeah. This is one of the things that yes, the more expensive one is generally better mm -hmm. because it's got a better it's got a better consistency. It's it's gonna it's, it's got not gonna color. dry out as quickly. Inside the bottle, it's yeah, it's got a better color. It could mixes. There are latex paints as well. Now, I don't mean latex paint that you get at Michaels. No, <laughs> there are actual dyes that yeah. you can use to dye latex your latex. Tints. Yes, latex tinting. There you go. Yeah. And the better quality of latex you have, the better it's going to keep that color. Yeah. The better it's going to mix in with that color. The better if that's it's going to look. The better it's going to it's going to mm -hmm. hold up. Um, ben Nye is one of my favorites. Yes. Um, again, what you want to do before you put anything latex on any of your your actors is do a real quick latex test you're going to take the underside of their arm um and just do a thick little line across and wait a couple of minutes um latex will tighten up when it dries so a little tightening is normal any burning any discoloration of skin around it that's an allergy and you cannot apply latex to that person yes so I think we're good on effects yeah. for the most part. Sorry, so I, just, I love talking effects. Yeah. Uh, let's go farther down our list now. And um, oh, You want to talk cameras? Let's talk cameras. Sure. Sure. Um, some of the effects, so, so, uh, there's, other, there's other ways to get, there's other effects to do. I don't know what the list is. I can't see it. I'm reaching my hand out to look at it. Show which, damn it. <laughs> Cranky. Wow. Well, what? You got the list five feet away from me. Uh, okay. Uh, dolly shots. You always wonder how to get dolly shots. Mm -hmm. And those are difficult, but they look great. Yep. Uh, Moving cameras are always yes. better. Uh, I will say when you're buying cameras, when you're looking into buying cameras, try to buy cameras with removable lenses and you will get the best quality out of them. Those lenses, the cameras with, now they're not, there's nothing wrong with lenses, with cameras that have stationary uh, lenses. Fixed lenses. Stuff, fixed or, lenses. Yeah. That's the word. Uh, fixed lenses. Nothing wrong with them, but you get an entirely different look out of them. Okay? Uh, we, just, we just got a Panasonic G7. It is a 4K camera. It is $600, and um, you can find relatively cheap lenses for them. With a little with a little adapter, you can buy a little CCTV lens. They're twenty five to twenty five to fifty bucks each. You can get beautiful images out of them. It's a little difficult to rack the focus on them, but they look gorgeous because it's well, difficult well, to rack focus just because they're so tiny. Well, one option, one little ha hack that we have for mm -hmm. that particular problem mm -hmm. is. Uh, we used to use them on the old can on the Canon, yeah. um, but a jar opener that you can get at a supermarket. A rubber jar opener, not a regular can or like those. A rubber jar opener, okay. It is, it's a little round. It's a it's a straight piece of rubber that opens wide in the center, and you can put it over a um, over a jar lid, and it tightens onto it, and allow you to twist the lid. 
you can use this on the lens, attach it to your lens, and then you'll end up with, it looks like a lever on it now. Mm. Because when you shift your focus with your hand, sometimes you turn you turn the you turn the uh, the ring a little too fast, a little too slow or it's uneven or something. Having this little knob there, this little now created uh handle? so difficult handle. There you go. <laughs> With this little handle on it. Cuz what the, what this is essentially you can tighten this particular rubber band. Yes. Um to fit the size of a jar that you need it to mm-hmm. and then it has these little teeth on the inside of it. Yeah. That will you know, it will attach to the ring of your of your lens the same way a follow focus system will. Mm-hmm. Okay, and now with this handle sticking off the end of it, and the fact that the handle is rubber, it has some give to it. So when you hit it, the lens doesn't shift immediately. You got to give it a little bit of pressure. It'll bend a bit, and then it'll start pulling with it. So it'll give you a smooth focus shift. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it'll be even. Too, because you're just keeping the same amount of pressure on it, and you just keep pushing and pushing until you get to the point that you want. And once you stop, you can slow. You you know when you let it go again, it gets a smoother stop. Right. Okay. Uh, so yes, this can help on these tiny little lenses as well, because these lenses really are so tiny. They're so small. You'll get your you'll get your hand in front of the lens. Mm-hmm. You can actually get your hand stuck in front of the lens, and you'll see your thumb yeah. sometimes or your finger because it's just really bit your finger. Tip, These yeah. lenses are literally the size of walnuts. Yeah. You know, they are very, very tiny, some of them. You know, but again, they look gorgeous. Mm-hmm. So it's worth it to, for 25 bucks, it's worth it to get it. If you see our short knock knock mm-hmm. on, uh, you can get it on our on, on Vimeo or I believe we put it on YouTube, but you find it on our Facebook page. The entire short was shot with a $25 lens. Right. And it looks, it looks, Gorgeous. Mm-hmm. You got this nice, soft, awesome focus around the edges and very crisp, clear focus in the center, and it looks great. Um, so you can use these. You can use this rubber jar opener on the end of your on the end of your lens to do that. Uh, other lens uh, we we talking about dolly. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're doing a dolly shot, you want as little focus racking as possible because you're moving the camera, and it's going to be very hard. To shift your focus while the camera's moving. It's very difficult to yeah. do this. You're only one person holding a camera. You only have so many hands and fingers. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're using one hand to move the camera. You're using the other hand to rack your focus. And you're still trying to... It becomes very difficult. So use a wider lens for some of your... Um, for your dolly shots. And then you can always crop it in post, especially if you're shooting in 4k. Uh, you can, cause then you're going to render to HD most likely, especially, right. you know, the chances that you're going to be putting this on Blu-ray are very slim, but even so shoot it in 4k. You can, you can crop, you can crop quite a bit out of it, you know, to get that close up if that's what you want. Um, some of your options for dollies, a skateboard is useful, is useful for a dolly. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's best if you're doing a low angle shot with a skateboard, you know, uh, I mean, really, everybody knows somebody with a skateboard. You have yeah. a skateboard or a roller skate or something like that. Roller you just blades. put, yeah, yeah, put, put your, put your camera on a, one of those little gorilla gorilla mounts, a tiny a tiny mount. Put it on t- on it. And now remember, skateboards have hard wheels. Yeah. So if you put this skateboard on concrete, you're going to get a lot of jittering. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get that. You're gonna get a jitter. So you don't. And it's going to be distracting. That's it's definitely not what you want for your dolly yes. shot. You want a you nice, want, smooth dolly exactly. shot. Exactly. So, so use that skateboard on a carpet, yeah. you know, or something soft on a softer type. Don't put it on grass because it's never going to happen. No. You know, <laughs> it's never going to work because your camera's just not heavy enough to push over any type of terrain like that. Yeah. Um, if you happen to come into a shopping cart... A that's shopping a, cart works. A wheelchair. a wheelchair. A wheelchair. Wheelchair is perfect Great. because a wheelchair you can actually have your camera operator sit in the wheelchair, and have the camera on a monopod that sits on his lap, and then you just have somebody push the wheelchair. Around. And those have rubber These wheels. These have large rubber wheels. Mm-hmm. But even so, even with the rubber wheels, it doesn't really matter because because. All of that shock is absorbed through the person's Perfect. body, through the wheelchair itself, and their hands and everything. So, you can get some really nice shots if you if you really want to get a little bit daring. You can have somebody on the back poke, the back spokes of a bicycle, 
mm-hmm. and have one person actually operating the bicycle and the other person with the camera standing on the back of it holding the camera there. And that's one way of doing it. If you know somebody you can who can ride a unicycle. <laughs> a unicycle, I wouldn't go that far. That's a little that's a little difficult. That's some serious uh, multitasking there. But uh, you can probably you can also go onto Amazon, twenty or thirty dollars, mm-hmm. and you can get a sticky pod, which is basically a flat board that has four large industrial strength suction cups on hell you can make this if you're handy enough you can buy these suction cups probably at home depot Mm -hmm. and make your own board and then put and then you attach the camera to the top of this board and you can now attach it to the front of a car or the hood of a car yeah we do this in theta states and yes Yes, and that's how we got a lot of our driving the yeah. driving shots in Theta States. We attached a sticky pod to the top of the car, yeah. faced it backward, and had the other car. We had one car driving; the other one was behind it, just following. And with a uh, telephoto lens, which we used the I think we used uh, no, we actually did. Did we use the zoom? No, we didn't use the zoom. We mm. used a. Um, uh, I forget what we used. We used some one of our one of our over fifty millimeter lenses, so that this way. Um, the, the, the shot itself is zoomed in enough Mm. where we don't see the roof of the car that it's attached to. Right. Okay. And the car stayed a certain distance behind us. Mm. Okay. So that this way you can see, I mean, you see how it's obvious how that's going to work. It's obvious how that's going to work. Okay. And again, if you're shooting in 4k, use the wide camera and then you can crop it at anything you see, crop it out. Yep. The only problem with this is shock absorption kind of sucks on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you have a rental house near you, I would suggest if you have a light enough camera, we rented for beneath, we rented, um, we rented an electronic gimbal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it costs us about $65 to rent it for the weekend. Most rental houses close over the weekends. Yep. Most of them do close on weekends. Uh, it sounds a little ridiculous, but they actually do close weekends. So you'll rent it on Friday. You'll return it on Monday. They will only charge you for one day most of these places because since they're closed, they're in inca- you're incapable of actually returning yeah. it the next day. So they can't charge you for three days if you physically can't return it. And a really, really nice thing is to find a Jewish rental house. Oh, those are the best. <laughs> those are the best. A Jewish run rental house, a lot of those play like B and H. They close during Jewish holidays. So they'll be closed sometimes two weeks at a time and yep. you're only gonna pay for one, one or two days, days rental. Yep. You're gonna get equipment for two weeks and you're only gonna pay for one or two days. The reason they do this, now it doesn't sound like this makes much sense. Yeah. Why would they do this? Because they don't want inventory sitting in the rental house mm-hmm. when there's nobody there. Yeah. The chances that somebody can break in and steal their equipment while they're gone or for God days on it happened. or something happens or Fire. whatever. Yeah. They would rather the place be, they'd rather you rent every piece for cheaper than normal. Yeah every piece of equipment and have an empty building Mm -hmm. when they're not there. It's much, they much prefer you take it cheap and just get it out of there because the truth is if it's in your hands and it breaks, you're paying for it. (laughs) But if it's in their hands and it breaks, then their insurance company is not very happy. If something happens, then they have lots of paperwork to do and all this stuff. And lots of inventory to wait to be replaced. Exactly. Exactly. So they'd much rather you pay, pay next to nothing for it. We rent, Rented this gimbal for three days, cost us sixty five dollars mm-hmm. to rent a gimbal for this. You can take this gimbal now, you put it on top of that sticky pot on your car, and that will remove a lot of the absorption because now it's electronically um, F- maneuvering, fixing maneuvering it. and fixing the the jitter that's coming from it. It actually has a it. motor that's going to stabilize your yes. camera. Yes. So for sixty five bucks, rent yourself a gimbal and get your dolly shots with that if you really want to. You know, like I said, use a wheelchair, use a skateboard, anything on wheels will work. Just take shock absorption into your into account with what you're doing. Um we move on, we get uh lighting. Mm-hmm. Lighting is something that is a mystery to a lot of people. Yep. I know a lot of people that just turn on a light and li- light the whole room with it and They're done. Yeah. No. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing is going to make your shot look flatter Mm -hmm. than by lighting it, the whole thing with one solid light. Yeah. Most rooms you shoot in will have a ceiling fan or something in the center. I never, ever, 
ever turn on the central light in a room because then your light's going outward and everything looks boring and flat. Yeah. I want a light from corners. I want a light from edges. I want a light from a window. I want a light from... A from, lamp. From the, from, the, from the lamp, from the floor up, from anything. Anything is going to look better in a shot mm -hmm. than the ceiling fan light in a room. Anything will... A friggin' flashlight <laughs> pointed at the wall and bouncing off is going to look better than the ceiling fan light. So that's that's a good hack to start with. Mm. Um, use your location. Use your walls. Use your ceiling. Don't don't you know? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about bouncing a light off of a ceiling or a wall. Um, if it's an all white room, go for it. Right? Yes, no, do not don't worry about it. Do Try it. to do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> use the walls to bounce light off of and to light from other sides. You can use one light to light two sides of your actor. Mm -hmm. By using a bounce. And bounce boards can be expensive. Technically, no, not anymore. Again, on it, you can go on Amazon and get one of those fold-out ones, those big circular uh, uh, reflectors. And they come, they come with multiple for, options, yeah, right? The they one, come with the that, gold and the silver and then the clear uh, frosted for diffusing. Mm -hmm. it, it will have a sleeve. The sleeve will be reversible. Mm -hmm. It has uh, black, silver, gold... Um, and the ring itself, the thing itself has a diffuser inside of it. Right. You know, uh, white, sorry, right. white, black, silver, and frosted. gold, and the thing itself will be frosted and the sleeve will go over it for different. Uh, so options. the gold, the gold is used for sunlight bouncing off something that looks like sun. The right? gold is best used for not just sunlight, but it will. It will then give you skin tone in your actors. Okay. Gold will give gold will give you that nice warm glow, mm -hmm. and gives your uh, actor skin tone. So you can light your entire room blue, give it that nice night blue look, and then use your reflector to bounce gold light onto your actor's skin tone and, and onto your and actor's face. Skin. And you give them the skin tone back, so your actors are not blue anymore. Right. Okay. You can get one of those on Amazon for $20, yeah. okay? If you really don't have that either, go over to Michael's, go over to your craft store, get a get a um, large foam core, foam core board yep. for 2 or $3 yep. and paint it silver. You know, you get some spray paint, spray paint it silver, get paint it gold. Get two of them gold. and paint one side, you know, leave one, one side one, white, leave one, make one gold, make one silver, make one black. Yep. Now you wonder why black. Black will remove light. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're getting a reflection from, from a certain area of the room and you can't move it. Sometimes you're shooting there and maybe there's a giant armoire in the corner and it's got these glass doors on it and it's creating reflections in the room and you just don't like it. Yeah. Like it's just, you don't want it. You know, take that take that black foam, just stick it in front of the armoire and now there's no light reflecting from it. And that's it. And the silver would be for cool? Uh, the silver is... The silver, I guess, cool, but it's pretty much going to reflect whatever color your light is. Okay. It's going to reflect whatever it is, but it's going to cool it down a little bit. If you use some sunlight, it's the silver will cool it down a little. Okay. You know, give it a little bit more of a blue, but it's good for straight reflecting light. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, same thing for the white. The white is going to reflect the light, but it's also going to soften it, mm -hmm. which is good as well. It's going right. to give. It's going to work as a as a diffused reflector. Right. And so for. You know, for ten bucks, you can get two of those and some paint and something, and just and you have four different options as far as reflectors. Yeah, I still say get one of those twenty dollar, twenty or twenty five dollars. It's so nice. It's collapsible and it's because not because you get big a diffusion on top of it. You get an yeah. actual diffuser on top of it that you can stick in front of your light because hard light mm -hmm. will flatten out your shot as well. A hard light is going to flatten your shot. Okay. Right. Sometimes you don't have much of an option. Okay. You don't have a diffuser. You don't have, but you do have a hard light, like one of those Home Depot lights, which a lot of people use. Yep. Fine. One way of doing, of, of, of lighting your scene with that, um, what you need to do is create a distraction mm -hmm. within the light. Uh, what we did for Sleepless, we had one of those clamp lights that you got at Home Depot that have the little silver bowl around them. And you put a 100-watt light bulb in it. And I lit most of the room with that one light, but it's hard light. It's very harsh. So it's going to give you very clear-cut, solid shadows. So it looks good for, you know, a daylight or a moonlight coming through a window. Right. 
but it doesn't really look good on your actors because it really gives them harsh Washing features. Them no. no. It gives them very harsh features. Okay. Okay, makes the shadow coming off their nose very hard shadow. The ridge between their eyes. And it, and, yeah. it brings a lot of contrast into your scene, and sometimes you just don't want that. Right. It also makes it very obvious the size of the room. Mm -hmm. Those hard shadows make the room look smaller right. because the shadow, you can see how far the wall is, and no matter how good your 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 bouquet is in your lens, no matter how, it, it's, it's flattening it out because you got this terrible hard shadow behind them. Mm -hmm. So what we did for Sleepless, your idea. My coffee filter? No. Oh, the blinds. Oh, yeah. So I went a little film noir You got to keep up with me here. I'm sorry. Keep up with me here. I was going in the opposite direction. Um, okay. Yeah. So for Theta States, well, particularly Sleepless, what we did um, was we used that hard light and then we picked up a uh, set of blinds for like... Venetian blinds. Venetian blinds for like, I don't know, 7 to $9 at the, yeah. you know. Yeah, get the smallest one you can. Get a small one for like 5 yeah. bucks. Well, it doesn't small... matter the color. doesn't matter nope. whatever. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, the cheapest one you can find. Then we just suspended it from the ceiling using fishing line, I believe, and yeah. twine. Find a way to suspend it from the ceiling. Find a way Hang to suspend it, from the, it from the ceiling. Put the light behind it and then just film noir the fuck out of it you know yeah. you blow those yeah. and and literally have the shadow the silhouette and the shadows of the blinds on a wall on a wall and across the actor and yeah. it created now while it still kind of flattened it out a little bit mm -hmm. it gave texture to yeah. the light it mm -hmm. gave texture and when the actor moved that caused the shadows to change yep. he's now moving across this and it looks like light blaring through the window so now you can light your entire scene with just one single light and it's not going to flatten it out because it's light it looks like light coming from outside mm -hmm. which is something that everybody's used to seeing right so it looks very natural even though it's not a natural light those blinds created slats across the whole room right and it gave texture to the whole thing and it made it all look very dynamic yeah then halfway through the scene we have the actor flip on a lamp inside the room hmm. and that was a prop so he yep. turned the lamp on and we still have this light blaring so we have a blue light coming through with the on one half of the room and the other half of the room now has the lamp that's in the scene which is warm yeah which is which is warm gives him his skin tone back yep. and the contrast of the two having the blue light on one side and the orange light on the other it made the entire room open up and yep. now we have space in the room again mm -hmm. Now the room looked deeper and bigger than it actually was. And we shot this in like a corner. The room the was corner like of a room. the room was like 10 by 10. Yeah. It was a small little room, but it made it look so much so much deeper and so much bigger by having two different color tones of light mm -hmm. and one of them having that textured light from the blinds. Right. Added a whole lot of depth to it. Two light bulbs in one room sitting on a bed. Yep. And and it looked great. And the fact that the lights, you can see where the light is coming from in the scene. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about hiding shadows anymore. You don't have to worry because you're, the light is now part of your shot. Yeah. So if it causes a shadow, so be it. You see where the light is coming from. When there's suddenly At least it creates an interesting shadow. And it gives it some sort of visual. Well, when you're interest. lighting, when you're lighting from when you're lighting from outside the scene, mm -hmm. you want to hide shadows because if your shadow, actor's shadow hits the wall, now your audience can tell where the light is coming from, and right. suddenly it looks like a scene. Right. But if the light is actually in the shot, or coming from something understandable, like through a window, like a window, exactly, it's part of the scene itself. Right. The audience already knows where the light is coming from. So it looks, so they're totally fine with these weird shadows coming from it. Because, oh, wait a minute, the window's over there. Yeah. It actually gives you a perspective of where you are in the room mm -hmm. now. Okay? Uh, if you're trying to get an idea of what we're talking about, you know, we're talking about the, the, the film noir detective shot. Mm -hmm. um, where you literally just see the slats on the, on the ground. Yes. Um, yeah. Now this isn't something that normally now you don't see that naturally because no. the sun is huge and we, you know this doesn't actually happen naturally, no. but it's it's in, it's in the collective hive mind already. Oh in the, yes, it's in the hive mind of this is what it looks like in movies yeah. and people are totally understanding of it and it looks really really it looks cool. Looks really cool. It looks really really cool. Yeah. So people are forgiving of those shots of those shadows now because you made it 
an artistic choice. Yeah, and, and you know, another real quick thing you can do with those blinds, yeah, you could return them in once you're done with them and get your money back. Or if you Five hang bucks. on to them, yeah, or if you hang on to them, you can actually, if, and you find some way, you can actually build a window onto a wall mm -hmm. using those blinds and a curtain, mm -hmm. like just a loose curtain, just build a, 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 a If you're shooting in front window. of that flat white wall yeah. that we all hate. Oh, the flat white wall. You have those flat white walls and everybody sticks them, sticks their actors in front of a white wall and boring. Fine. That's boring and flat and it kills your whole shot. Take that Venetian blind secure it to the window put some put some blind put put a, a curtain in front of it yeah. and if you really have and if you can, a way of doing it put a light behind it a light it. behind it and you have an instant mm -hmm. like light source and and yeah. inter interest in the background mm -hmm. gives you something to look at you need some mm -hmm. texture in your scene some shots so this way when those shadows do hit the wall at least they're hitting something else and it breaks it up a little bit you yeah. know another thing you can do is uh, on top of that go outside Grab a branch off of a tree or something, okay. and just wave it in front of an in front of an actual window. Yeah, you know, and it creates a moving shadow as well, and it looks like wind is blowing outside now. Another these cool, things are, cool, these things happen. Another cool effect that we've done. Um, we've had a character sitting in front of a television. Yeah. Um, and we've literally just used instead one of the of lights using the, instead of using the television itself. Yeah. You know. To increase the effect, we use we had somebody hold one of the little LED lights and just wave their hand in front of it mm -hmm. um, to get the not flicker crazily, of the just a little. Yeah, move your fingers around. Yeah, and it creates this effect of a TV Flicker. screen flickering. Yeah. In their face, and it looks great. Yeah. Now, sometimes you don't even notice it. Like we did it in a, in a, in all pair, and you barely notice it. But there's a couple of spots on his face where the light is reflecting, specifically like on, on, in, in the canal mm -hmm. of his ear. Yeah. In one of the shots, the light wasn't really hitting his face, but it was bouncing off the canal of his off off the ridges on his ear, yeah. and you saw that little blue light and just that tiny little bit and and between that and the light reflecting in his eye it gave him a life light mm -hmm. and it made the whole scene look alive. so dynamic and it yeah. made it look alive just these tiny little things because you need all you're trying to do is is to give the brain something to latch on to, to connect to. yes and the brain will automatically be like, oh, okay. Like, you're not even, you're not going to watch the scene and be like, yeah. look at that TV we shot flickering the scene. on his ear. No, your brain is just going to see that slight flicker and it's going to accept that there's a television mm -hmm. in front of him. We shot the scene from behind the TV. We didn't even see the screen no. of the TV. No, we TV never wasn't saw even on. It. We shot from I don't behind even think the, the TV. The TV worked. No, um, no, it didn't. It no, didn't. It, TV didn't. No, work. we didn't have anything to attach it to. No, it was just yeah. a TV sitting there. We shot over the TV, so we saw the we saw the top of the TV and the bottom of the frame, yeah. and we had him hit the remote. And when you hit the remote, you flipped the light on, and boom, blue yep. light blasted, and blue light hit him in the in the front of his in his face. Yep. And look at the TV turned on, and then your fingers just just waving in front of it made it look like the TV was flickering. And as he was flipping channels, you did a little more of a of a motion in front of it to make yep. it look like the TV. Move. Yeah, and then you just add some sound effects, and it just it really sells the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, for the hard light, uh, there are some other solutions. If you don't want to get that diffuser, which is only twenty dollars, you can use a frosted shower curtain, mm -hmm. um, wax paper for smaller lights. Yep. Um, there was one set that we completely forgot the diffuser, and I used coffee filters and coffee front of the filters light. in front of the LED lights. Now yeah. remember. This also depends on the types of lights you're yes. using because those Home Depot lights, they get hot. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to attach anything to no. the light. Well, wax uh, paper would be good for those because wax paper doesn't... Um, yes. Yeah, that would be a safer, the safer style. That would be safer. Wax paper or parchment paper mm -hmm. could work for it because those are able that, to Those be. are heavy diffusers. Yes, yes. Those are very heavy diffusion, so you're going to need a bright bulb. But if you're talking about that 150-watt yeah. Home Depot light, yes, it's a good thing to put in front of it. To, to put, in, put in front of it, but it, it's still... Don't put your shower curtain in front of it. Do not put no, no. But even so, that it. wax paper can is still flammable. Yes. So you got to be careful with it as well. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is use that shower curtain mm -hmm. and keep it a foot or so in front of the light. Yeah. All right. Um, you what we're using right now? We have these um, mic stands that we that we use, and we get them for twenty bucks on Amazon, twenty twenty five dollars on Amazon. Uh, you can these these stands will extend all the way up to about six and a half feet or so, six feet or so. Um, use these stands and hang your shower curtain off of it if that's what you need to do. Just weight the bottom because the shower curtain can 
is going to tip it. Yeah. So get a little sandbag or something to put. You know, We've uh, used ankle weights that I have yes, at home. <laughs> yeah, the two or three pound ankle weights. Put a couple of them on the bottom of the of it. Um, I've. I, we've used large rolls of duct tape and just put them down yep. the pole, the pipe, to add an extra, you know, pound or two, just something. Yep. And always have. Uh, remember when you're doing something like when you're using a stand like that, always have somebody standing next to it just in case it tips. Now you're not, you don't really have anything heavy or difficult, but you don't want it to fall during your scene. You don't want it to fall and hit somebody or whatever. Yeah, you know, it, so, it can always poke an eye out. Yes, always, always uh, err on the side <laughs> of caution. Yep. Yeah, you're going to poke an eye out. <laughs> this giant mic stand, that's right. But these are, these are on, they're called on stage stands. You get them for $25 on Amazon. And take your shower, take a frosted shower curtain, hang it in front of it, put that Home Depot light behind it. Yep, about, about a foot, a, behind, about a foot it. behind it. So this way it doesn't heat up the curtain at all. Mm -hmm. And light your scene with that. And it'll diffuse the light, give you a nice soft light across your whole scene. Mm -hmm. And you're done. Now that's if you're lighting with one, with, with only one light, which a lot of people, yeah, that's pretty much what you have available to you. Yeah. You know? Um, mag lights work too. They get really, really bright. Mag lights are bright as hell and most people have a mag light already. Yeah. You know? Um, Other strange things that we've done, um, we got a party light, one of those weird rotating red lights that does this uh, really- A, kaleidos a kaleidosco kaleidoscope type light. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was like five bucks or yeah. something like and that. I, we got it at a party city and yeah. it created this really weird dream-like effect that just went across the actors because it was a dream. Yeah. It was a dream. I just, hey, red light inside a blue room, this red kaleidosco kaleidoscope type light that just sat on the wall and it looked weird. Yeah. Because it was a dream. Yeah. Hey, it's a dream. Anything can happen yeah. in a freaking dream. Oh, yeah. You know? And, and it looked really nice and by hitting it on the actor's face by putting it onto the actor uh, it gave them this really weird look on their face in one shot we put it right on the wall and it gave this really weird void looking yeah. kind of thing it's you know when it you're was doing sort of dream, like hell with flames meets get I don't even know yeah get look, creative look for weird lights like yeah. that's cool like try different lights uh, we actually um we had some of these uh, track lighting. We had mm -hmm. these track lights that we got from somebody, a friend of ours who worked at a nightclub, and they redid their lights, and they were throwing them all out. Yeah. And she said, hey, look, all these track lights, do you guys have any use for them? Sure, I'll take them. Yeah. So we got these track lights. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I don't use them as track lights, but... They're giant lights. They're yeah. really big lights, and they can hold like a 400-watt light bulb in them. So we put these really, we had these really, really really bright light bulbs in them that do get very hot. Mm -hmm. And um, what I did was I took strips of leather. Mm -hmm. I took big squares of scrap leather that I got on Amazon as well because I had it for another thing that we were using and they were just like, you know, big pieces of leather. Yeah. And I cut a bunch of holes in them. Like weird like shapes, Random lines. shaped holes in them. And I put that onto the head of the track light. Now this is leather, so it's not going even if it gets hot, it's not gonna burn. Yeah. It's just leather. Yeah. And I left enough where it the light blasted through it and it created weird shapes and I took the one light to blast across the entire room. Now we were doing this in an office and the office was it was supposed to be at night mm -hmm. and the office was abandoned. Yeah. So this is always something you, you want to light a scene at night where it's supposed to be dark, but you still have to be able to see your actors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to create something with the light. You have to light them somehow where it doesn't look like there's actual lighting in the room. No. So I use this and we lit the entire hallway and, and some of the full rooms with this where it's just like little bits of light around it and the farther away you get the more diffused and blurry the light gets mm -hmm. but it's never a solid light hitting the wall there's no, no spots where there's it, just it solid like tiger white. stripes almost or like some cheetah of things yeah. 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 that's what i mean that's what it looked like i to made me. like five or six of them yeah. with all different cuts and designs and shapes and stuff out yeah. of them we call these cookies yeah we call it a cookie yeah. um where they you put this in front of a light to create a shape on the wall yeah I mean, and, and I mean, we have old school lights. I, I work at an architectural lighting firm and they were cleaning out the uh, the sample room mm -hmm. last year. And I literally just took every light that I could because yeah. <laughs> they were giving them away. They were throwing them out. Um, you have no idea where you can find lights, but you can mm -hmm. find lights. Trust me. 
Um, you know enough people who work nightclubs, bars, theaters, uh, architectural lighting firms. You can, oh, yeah, because everybody get, knows somebody who wears an architectural know. lighting. Listen, it's, you know? it's pretty big field. You'd be surprised. But this was something we had. Um, so yeah, but you, these these lights had barn doors. So barn doors you can also use mm-hmm. um, to shape the light, um, create interesting shadows and interesting light that Patterns. way. Yeah. 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 So, that, so the, the idea of that leather... Is a good idea because you can yeah. do you can put that on the Home Depot lights as mm-hmm. well because the leather is not going to burn. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to get warm. It is absolutely going to just get make warm. sure that you have good work gloves. Yeah, because um, that's and, what we ended up doing. And mm-hmm. me and um, Sarah held a lot of the lights by hand. Um, you know, we actually had one character who was like a ghostly character. We put her in a white dress, and then we actually held the light underneath inside the dress and and lit up the entire dress with the light. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can do some really interesting things with with little lights all over the place. Yeah, um, some of the uh, uh, some of the other things I've heard lots of I've heard I've seen people use um, DVD cases, mm-hmm. Blu-ray cases as as lighting. Now this works, but again it can get very hot. Yeah, and I see this I see these tutorials. Oh, just stick it on the light and hang it. But if it gets if you're using a hot light, it's going to melt that case mm-hmm. and. That's a plastic case, so if that melts enough, that's going to drip on the floor, mm-hmm. and it could either start a fire, ruin someone's carpet. Uh, if it smokes enough, you if can set smokes. off the, the fire alarms at yes. the location, and oh then my God. if it, then all of a sudden a location that maybe you're you're allowed to be in one particular office, but maybe the building doesn't really know you're in there, then you, you set know, off the fire. You set yeah. off the fire. Now alarm your location and... manager is going to get in trouble, and mm-hmm. you're lo- and you could lose the location. Yeah, so don't use anything anything that's going to melt. Yeah. Anything, don't melt just or don't, smoke. No, don't just don't do it. Avoid it. There's yeah. plenty of other methods of doing this. Just keep your lights away from anything that. If can you're melt. if you're not sure if it's flammable or not, just be safe and put it a foot away or so from the light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't hurt to do that. No. You're not gonna you're not gonna lose anything by by moving stuff away from your lights. Um, Another quick trick: sci-fi people uh, with the. Uh, J.J. Abrams effect and how did you create this oh, one? Oh, um, uh, the Spielberg look is Spielberg used to shoot. I don't know if he still does, but he used to shoot on anamorphic lenses, and we'll get into what anamorphic lenses specifically are uh, at another time. But anamorphic lenses create these very interesting lens flares. Spielberg was known for it in um, uh, Close Encounters and E.T. Mm-hmm. and J.J. Abrams loved it and you know, now it's become his signature yeah. thing. Those those slats, if you watch any of the news, the, the, the first two Star Trek movies, especially the first one, oh my God. <laughs> there is not a single shot without a lens no. flare. Okay? Uh, but sometimes it looks really, really cool. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, he kind of went a little overboard with it, but they did it all naturally. Yeah. They did. They put a lot of work into it, where they positioned the certain lights, certain color lights, put them in certain spots to make it all happen naturally within the movement of the camera. Mm-hmm. You can add it in post. There are overlays for it. Uh, we actually did one for Theta States, but if you want to do it in camera, one way of doing it instead of getting these expensive, expensive anamorphic lenses, which are really a pain in the ass to work with, unless you know what you're doing. Even when you do know what you're doing, they're a pain in the ass. Fishing wire. Run a fishing wire vertically on your lens. Now, you need to use a wide aperture lens so that this way the fishing wire is not noticeable. If you're using a uh, a low aperture lens, there's not enough light getting into it and you're going to see the line in front of it. Use a wide aperture lens and put it in front of your in front of uh, the lens um Vertically, you can attach it with a piece of rubber band. Just take a rubber band, put it on, and then run the fishing wire. You use thin fishing wire. What happens is when the light hits it, um, the fishing wire is actually going to absorb the light. And that's going to create a nice lens flare as the camera moves. Now, a steady camera, it's not going to do anything. You have to be moving the camera in order okay. for this to happen. So this way the light actually, so this way the the, port, the point where the light is hitting the fishing wire moves across it. You can put it vertically, you can put it horizontally, whichever way you want it, you know. When you look at it, you'll see what it does, and then you'll see the effect you're looking for. Um, I've also gotten uh, lens, uh, uh, lens things with the uh, starburst effects on 
the lens itself, uh, lens filters that just screw onto the end of it. I got a set for like ten dollars of three different three different types of a three star, five star, and eight star. Mm. And what it did was it created every single light that was in the shot had a starburst effect around it. And it looked really good. And we used that for to, for the detectives in Blood Slaughter when they were walking around the dark room, and it just gave this really cool effect because uh, the only thing lighting it is the one light, the one flashlight coming right. off them. You know. Right. Uh, and then there'd be another light, just just enough, bright enough to see their faces. But when they turn that light toward the camera, mm-hmm. take that flashlight, hit your lens with it. Just let, let that flat, let that light hit the lens, and you get this awesome burst, and it looks great. Yeah, such a really cool effect to get, and really easy and really cheap to do it. Um, <sighs> we've been rambling. Yeah, we for have a been. while now. Uh, there's more, but. Oh, there's there's a ton. I mean, these there's are just, so much more. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll end up doing another episode on this. We're going to yeah. wrap this up for today, though. Yeah, did a lot of talking. Yeah, blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. And I have to real quick announcement that I totally forgot to say at the beginning of this show. Okay, is we got our first hashtag. Show me your first. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Go so uh, Miss Stephanie Davis say, sent us her migraine health short, which is her very first. Mm-hmm. Super exciting. I shared it, so definitely check me out on Twitter. The link is there. She is with Bouncy Boxer Media, I believe. Uh-huh. And yeah, so we got our very first. Show us your first. Yeah, so if you have a, you, your, your first short, if it's out there and online, we want to see it. Send it to us. Hashtag show me your first. And um, yeah, we'll watch it. Yeah. We'll watch it and share it around. Yeah. Uh, so that's it. Follow us on, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Google Play Music, and whatever podcatching app is your choice. Uh, if there's one that we're not on that you want us on, let us know. You can email us your comments, suggestions, or whatever else you want uh, at filmmakingsucks at gmail.com. We thank you all for listening. I hope you got some of this, uh, some of this DIY-ness in your brain and it helped out if it didn't then yeah tell us at filmmaking sucks at gmail.com to shut up or just you know rate us give us five stars on your there favorite you go. That, podcast that app especially itunes uh let us know if there are actually people listening that would be good to know mm-hmm. <laughs> um yeah. unless we run into you at an event then make sure you tell us that you love the podcast yeah yeah so well, again lovecraft bar we yes. will be there in manhattan lovecraft nyc uh, Friday, August 25th, we'll be screening three of our shorts along with all the other craziness that will happen uh, from starts at the uh, doors at 6 p.m. Five dollars to get in. Please come on out, hang out with us, say hello, watch some cool movies, listen to some music and celebrate the 127th birthday of H.P. Lovecraft, the father of cosmic horror. Hashtag HBHP. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it this week for us at Filmmaking Sucks. Final words? Thank you, good night, and good luck. Get out there, everybody, and make good films. And put it one foot away from your light.